It's the end of another era. This is my last video in Detroit. Hello and welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Kit and today the girls have gone Bible. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Angela or Arielle and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content they put out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below along with sources and resources and now onto the reason we're all here. Girls Gone Bible is a podcast run by actresses Arielle and Angela. Per their bio, all things Jesus, all things life. A couple of imperfect girls serving an absolutely perfect God. They began their podcast in May 2023 and they've grown quickly. By the time this video goes live, I'm sure they'll be at 600,000 subscribers. And at that, they're currently doing a For God So Loved the World tour. And if I wanted to see them in Detroit, a ticket would run me between $57 to 118. They also have merch. Though everything is currently sold out, the cheapest option is a hat for $35 and the most expensive is a sweatshirt for $68. I'm curious to know how much GGB makes them because since at least the third episode, though I suspect they were in a studio from the start, they've been using Melrose Podcasts, a premier podcast studio that runs $125 an hour for the studio and audio engineering. But given they have multiple cameras and everything is so polished, I wouldn't be surprised if they were paying the $500 for for full production multicam and socials. I would, however, be surprised if they stayed within the hour and 15 minute limit to pay only for an hour. And can someone explain this to me? I obviously understand the impulse to film and post your thoughts to the world, but paying for a studio not even a month in? They're not locked into a contract, but it just seems strange. But this video isn't about their filming habits. Today, we're going to have a look at wives submit to husbands for obvious reasons, and an interview they did with George Janko, How Men Can Get a Good Woman, which had some takes. First up is submission, and regular viewers know how I feel about it. Don't. You can be a good person and a good partner without submitting. Their video is over an hour long, and I was really surprised that they had that much to say about the subject, but it turns out the first 20 minutes or so are an announcement of their tour, and then they go on to discuss their first show, and then an advertisement before getting to the topic of the video, how wives are to submit to their husbands. Of course, everyone who talks on this subject uses the same verses, but I'm always interested in how it's interpreted. And a quick glance at my playlist on this topic, Girls Gone Bible are the first two women I've seen speaking on this that aren't married. They'll be bringing a different perspective and as usual, I'm curious. And before I begin, I want to note that I'm not talking about Christians in general, but the particular beliefs of Arielle and Angela, and if you're a submissive wife, that's your business. My concern is people, especially people with a large platform, who are preaching about how submission is what women should do. And though these two aren't the worst, they're not the only either. Please see my submission playlist for more information. Arielle and Angela start out by saying that they're talking about this because one day they'll be married and it's important to study and prepare yourself and also learn from their mistakes and don't submit to boyfriends. They start with Ephesians and it strikes me that they're taking the Bible very literally. Ephesians 5 gives a whole outline of God's design and God's order in marriage and this whole Ephesians 5, this whole passage from it, it paints a metaphorical picture of Christ, man being Jesus, being Christ, and woman being the bride. So a man, the woman is redeemed, saved, sanctified, set apart, made holy, and restored, and she's bought at a price. And then the man, is the one who's responsible for doing all of that for the woman. Setting aside the she's bought at a price, is it just me or does it sound as though they're saying an unmarried woman can't be saved because if she's not married, she hasn't been redeemed, saved, sanctified, set apart, made holy, and restored by a man who is responsible for doing that for her. That strikes me as not right, but maybe they'll explain. The reason why there's such an attack on marriage is because that a marriage is the only covenant picture that like illustrates what it's like to be in relationship with God, with Jesus and the church. Man is Jesus. We as women are the church. Someone finally said it. I've observed more times than I care to remember that submission treats the man like Jesus. It's still weird though. At least I wasn't taught that men are a stand-in for Jesus. Only Jesus is Jesus. 
Anyway, the enemy attacks marriage because it's a stand-in for the church and Jesus. The thing about submission, and it's such a touchy subject, but it's not about value. It's not about equality. God loves women. We know I have never felt more. People say all the time that like Christianity is patriarchal. Patri- patriarchal? Patriarchal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that it's like that God is um, against women and that he doesn't love women and that he, that's why he appointed men to be the leaders. Who when, says this? The feminists? The feminists. Yeah. Anyone, the Antichrist, anyone against Jesus. Today I learned that as a feminist, I am also the Antichrist. Great. Anyway, yes, a religion that deems man the head, the leader, is indeed patriarchal. That is literally what patriarchy means. A system of society or government in which the father or eldest male is head of the family. I'm glad they're amused though. Anyway, she acknowledges there are moments in the Bible where women aren't treated right, but says that's not the Bible's message. They're just stories that reflect the history. But God is very clear that he loves women and we are man or woman, children of God, equal in value, different in role. Mm -hmm. We're equal in value. It's not about value. It's about order. Mm -hmm. God is a God of order. Things have to be in order. It goes God, the husband, the wife, and then the children. If it's about equal worth but different roles, why is the husband head over the wife? Why aren't they side by side with God above both of them? I know, I I hear you where that that word submit is a little, people are like, oh, I have to submit. But I believe that submission is like the highest form of beauty for Mm. a woman. I mean, if I'm going to submit to you, it's because I trust your leadership, I trust your character, I trust your your intellect, your your integrity. Um, So... I'm going to trust you and I'm going to trust that that I'm going to take you I can sit back and mm. really just let you lead. I mean, that's the that's beautiful. Mm. I, I, how beautiful is that that we can sit back and and let the person that we trust lead us. Mm-hmm. And um and then when it says um it says love your wives as as Christ loved the church. For me that When I hear that, that's the highest form of submission. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at what Jesus did. He gave his life for the church. That's that's even more of a higher submission than women. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Submission, yeah. And I would say it's fairly normal to, you know, trust the person you're with in general. But why does submission have to be brought into it? And why do they always say men are called to die for their wives as Jesus died for the church? I believe it was the anti-bot who noted that submission is a daily action for women, while dying for your wife is something men are supposed to do, but aren't actually called to. Which is good. I don't think people need to or should die to prove their love or devotion. But they try to make it sound equal. Yes, he makes a decision, but who is whispering in his ear? That's you. He's not a dictator. You can give your opinion before he makes the decision. And it's not. Arielle spoke of her friendship with Angela and how important it is to know your strengths and weaknesses, and they take turns leading according to those strengths and weaknesses in their friendship. But the sad reality is that there are those who would disagree with everything they just said and do believe women should just shut up and submit. And let's remember my favorite line from a biblical wife. It's not submission if you agree. They can try to dress it up as much as they want, but that is the bottom line. Maybe you can give your opinion, but ultimately you have to submit to his decision. Because he is a man and thousands of years ago, a man wrote that wives are to submit to their husbands and people took that very literally. But ignore me, submission will make you feel beautiful. When you submit and you really like, when you're able to let a man take the lead, how beautiful do you feel? Oh man, there's nothing like it. Do you know what I always say? Mm -hmm. I always say love for a man is when you respect him. When you can respect your man, that's that's like the highest form of love mm-hmm. for him. And then and then for women, it's it's feeling safe. It's feeling uh, emotionally safe. That stability. Okay. That's that's how we feel love. So if you're giving us that that um, emotional stability, we're going to respect you. Mm. If we, if we, if you can't give us that stability, we don't respect you. That's Amen. just the truth. I was going to say, I don't know why they need to romanticize it, but of course, to make it sound appealing. It's just so feminine to submit, you know? Their ideas of what is feminine are a bit odd, but we'll get to that later. In the meantime, 
I still want to know why love and respect are apparently separate. You can respect someone without loving them, but how can you love someone without respect? But that is how it has to be for submission to work. If you truly value your partner's opinions, thoughts, and experiences, you wouldn't want them to submit to you. Back to the Bible, Angela reads a verse, and I wish we could stop with this already. And I think what's really important for us to realize and remember, and it's something that I've learned over the years through my dating relationships, is men and women are so different mm -hmm. and we want to be loved in a different way and so the sooner we realize that like because as women I feel like we are like why doesn't he love me why isn't he affectionate why isn't he showing it it's because they are wired completely different you know. from us and then the guys are like why is she so this why is she so you know what I mean and it's like she's different from you mm -hmm. and then oftentimes couples it's like as soon as they're out of the honeymoon stage they start trying to change each other and they start trying to mesh the other one and force them to be whatever it is that they want them to be mm -hmm. in whatever way that they are themselves mm -hmm. but the sooner that we realize that that's never going to happen that we're wired differently and we have to learn how to dance with one another in these differences that's when you can have peace in a relationship men and women are actually more similar than they are different and if you want an affectionate partner they are out there i promise there are men out there who love showing affection Though it does occur to me that if these two live in a world where affection is something women do, men in that world might not be comfortable showing affection, fearing that would somehow impinge on their masculinity. But yes, people are all different and you shouldn't try to force someone to conform to your will. If you don't mesh, let them go and find someone who does. On that note, Angela tells a story about how men want to be respected and women want to be loved. And again, I want to know how and why the two are separated, but instead of an explanation, I get a story about how Angela and a former partner could communicate just fine, except during a conflict. And then she realized, even before she read the Bible, he wanted to be respected and she wanted to feel loved. And when he didn't feel respected, he withheld love. And when she didn't feel loved, she wouldn't be as respectful. And the lesson she learned was that, if you want harmony in your relationship, you give respect to your man because it's not based on a feeling and he has to give love regardless of how he feels in the moment because, again, it's not based on a feeling. It's based on what God is calling them to do. I have to give my husband respect regardless of how I feel and he has to give me love regardless of how he feels in right. the moment. Whether we feel it or not, not because it's not based on our feelings, it's based on what God is calling us to do. Yeah. He's calling me to respect him and he's calling him to love me yeah you know and then I think if I'm if I am in a marriage and something isn't going right honestly you just bring bring it and bring it to prayer say oh, God absolutely. I don't know what's going on but intervene and I'm just gonna let it go and I'm gonna let him come to me in his way but I'm just gonna pray on it it's a beautiful thing about godly relationships marriages it's it's when it's God center it there's there's no way it can fail yeah I don't think it works like that but it is interesting though that they assume contention in their relationships and that's why they need God. I guess just being two adults who use their words and, I don't know, respect one another isn't enough. You know, because you, yeah. you're not you're not trying to go head to head with each other. There's there's God in the middle of it who works it out all out for you guys. Mm -hmm. I didn't know God moonlighted as a marriage counselor. Moving on. Angela recommends prayer over criticism and I am so confused by these folks. It's like they can't imagine being kind, being thoughtful, being mindful of their fellow humans. They have to have God intercede because they can only nag, criticize, upset. Yeah, no one likes criticism, but you know, you can say things in ways that aren't harsh. And that would probably be more effective than hoping God fixes whatever the issue is for you. And on that note, Ariel also has a story. As you're talking, I'm thinking about when I was in my relationships and because I, I'm a very submissive woman, I, I love to be able to trust the guy and let him take the lead. But when I don't feel safe, mm -hmm. when I feel like something's not right, mm -hmm. I turn into a different person. Yes, very good. Self-preservation is an important instinct and you should listen to it. If you don't feel safe, don't try to force it. I trust Arielle would agree with that, but what she says in the video is not that. I become like very hard. I can't, I can't, I'm not rested. I'm, I go head to head. Mm. And, um, but I never had God in the center of my relationships, but yeah. And I'm sure that you guys, some of you guys feel like that too, when you're not get, getting that love or that safety, you, you then go head to head with them. And 
I would just encourage you guys, like we said, to to bring it to God and to really sit down in prayer. Don't go, don't go to him or her and 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 try to combat with them. Mm. Just bring it to prayer. Has it occurred to these two that if you're always combative with someone, if they make you feel unsafe, maybe that's not the person for you? Nah. We get another Bible verse and then. So even if your husband is not even a believer, not even a follower of Jesus, not doing the right thing, you have to accept his authority no matter what. I thought submission didn't mean never being heard. And now you have to accept your husband's authority no matter what. But your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent Mm -hmm, lives. mm -hmm. Even though men are the leaders, we can still lead by example. I would think, I would argue that it's so much more powerful instead of going to your man and being like, you're not strong enough in your relationship with God and you're not reading the Bible every day and you're not praying enough. If you simply just do all these things yourself yeah. and don't say a word, but he sees you every single day in the word, on your knees, praying. He's hearing you listening to worship music and worshiping in the other room. The Holy Spirit will naturally convict him by your behavior. And I think that's just such a good lesson for all of us. I would like to know why these two apparently think the only way to talk to someone about a disagreement is an argument. But anyway, this seems so underhanded. Sure, don't try to change someone, but try to influence them. Honestly, the latter sounds worse because you're trying to be sneaky about your intentions. I'm assuming they would only marry someone of the same faith level, and by all means, if your spouse stops believing, don't let that deter you from doing what you would usually do, but don't keep doing the thing, or start doing the thing, with the belief that the Holy Spirit will work some ma- Well, I guess not magic. Some Jesus on your spouse's heart. On the bright side, They say not to push beliefs on people. And they also say to just live out your beliefs and people will be drawn to the fruit of your lives and want that for themselves. Arielle and Angela talk about how authority can be a scary word and it doesn't mean being controlled and how submitting to someone because you think you're losing them isn't submission. You submit because you trust. I thought it was because of God's natural order, but okay. Speaking of which, they talk about how the Bible actually calls for a mutual submission, which is men being called to sacrifice themselves for their wives, but... Now they're calling that submission. It's funny. I I really studying this. I, I I was like, wow, men really are servants to their women. Absolutely, they are in full submission to us. They have their role as men is so huge. I mean, think about that. They will take. They have to take their lives. They would give their lives for us. It's just, yeah, it's. It's truly the highest form of submission in my eyes, so. Funny how men are still the ones calling the shots in their relationship despite being in full submission to their women. Anyway, Angela talks about how Jesus never asks us to do what he hasn't done and she would be silly to think she doesn't have leadership capabilities in leading her family in some ways. And, you know. And so it would be ignorant and silly for a man to think that leadership means complete and total domination and I'm not going to take my wife's thoughts into consideration because that's not what God is calling you to do at all. I would love to see these two talk to the transformed wife. And then Arielle jumps in and says that when husbands stay home and wives go out to work, it doesn't work out, which source? This leads her to conclude that God's design is for a reason and who knew capitalism was part of God's divine plan? I did appreciate this though. The the whole purpose of a man and and submitting to him is because he's a protector. He's a provider. I know I've said this in a video before, maybe in multiple, but sometimes I really do think that some women push the idea of submission because they just don't want to be adults. The purpose of a man is protector and provider. Really? Anyway, Angela agrees. And then we talk about even that damn apple. And basically, God was setting up the order because he is a God of order. God gives instructions to men and then men relay them to women. And I'm curious as to why women need an intermediary to hear from God. And also how Angela and Ariel can repeat this and then say that men and women are equal before God. And I truly believe that man has such a massive responsibility. And if your wife isn't acting properly, if she's not behaving, if she's not doing all that she can in her own relationship with God, you have a part to play in that. You're not properly leading her. Yeah. Talking about a woman behaving, 
Mm hmm. Angela says that if your wife is having trouble submitting, you have to look at your leadership. Ariel agrees and says that's why it's important to marry selfless men and how hard they are to find. And um... Unfortunately, we live in a world where not everybody, even followers of Jesus, are going to be behaving in a way that is pleasing to God. And I'm so sorry if you're in a position where the person you're with isn't selflessly leading you and your family. Um, and I just want to speak into the fact that you, your obedience and willing to submit, even when your person, your husband is not leading you in the way that would please God, your obedience to God in the way, because it's not your husband that calls you to submit. He shouldn't. Actually, a man should never ask you to submit. You submit because God calls you to it. And your obedience to God, regardless of what your man or husband is doing and the way that he's leading is so pleasing to God. And there's favor on that. And there's peace in that. If they're going to encourage submission, I wish they at least wouldn't praise women for submitting even when their husbands aren't acting as they ought. I trust it's unintentional, but it's sounding very, God doesn't care what women do so long as they submit to their male authority. Unsurprisingly, Angela calls for women to just keep loving and praying and invites women in these situations to leave a comment so she and Arielle can pray for them. Arielle then tells us she's sick of men saying they need a chase and encourages women to be themselves, which is a loving, nurturing person. I do enjoy how she assumes all women are loving and nurturing. They do say one thing I agree with, don't play games, be upfront and open from the beginning, and then they admonish men to treat their women right, otherwise their prayers will be hindered, and... I feel like, like when I hear when women want to be I, I, I can't quite understand when women want to be domineering because it's just the, the way that men were made. They're more aggressive. They are the protectors. So I, there is nothing more beautiful than us sitting back. Has it occurred to her that some women just are domineering? It's not an act? She goes on to say she gives women grace because this generation is getting scary and she sees that women are hurting and men aren't acting right. So women need to act tough. They discourse about provision and what that means for a bit, declare that women need men to be their rocks, and decide that porn and video games are destroying men. Angela also says that men should implement fasting and yeah. A lazy generation of men is literally the most dangerous thing that can ever happen to us docile men. We will, as a country, be taken over. You guys don't know how serious it is. If our men get weak, it's already happening. I do believe that's the enemy. It's the enemy's plan. This isn't exactly a surprise to hear. They did open the video talking about the spiritual warfare they experienced at their first event, but it is disconcerting. It's like every professional Christian thinks the enemy is out to get them and the enemy is both vague and everywhere at the same time. Anyway, Arielle talks about her grandparents and says their love was like out of the notebook and I do like that movie, but I'm not so sure that relationship, at least in the beginning, is one you want to hold up as a model. Anyway, the point is that safety has nothing to do with money and the couples with money are the most miserable because the husbands are only focused on their careers and neglect their wives. Angela says all she wants is a husband who will cover her in prayer. Arielle agrees and says without God, there's no joy in life. They also talk about being unequally yoked. They're not in favor of it. And well... But the thing is, the reason why I always love being in a relationship is because I am just like you are naturally submission, submission, naturally submissive. I love being under a man's authority. Mm -hmm. It feels really good. Submission should feel good. Mm -hmm. The world has lied to women for a long time saying that we need to be boss babes who are the leader and masters of everything and the rulers of our own lives and making us feel that it's actually wrong and uncomfortable to be in a position of submission. Who else is getting tired of hearing the phrase boss babes? Especially from people who, by their own definition, are boss babes. I highly doubt their fathers are the ones running their show or managing their acting careers. Anyway, Yes, some people are naturally submissive and that doesn't mean they're wrong or bad. They just need to be careful about who they surround themselves with, though that is also true of everyone. And there are also people, including women, who aren't submissive and have no desire to be such. And that also doesn't mean they're wrong or bad or told to be that way by society. People are different, even women, and they have different personalities and needs and wants. And that's okay. Angela does have a whole speech about this though, and I have some thoughts. And I understand if you've not felt safe 
by men throughout your life. Maybe you don't feel safe by God. Maybe you don't feel safe by your own dad, your uncles, some men in your family from childhood that either hurt you or mistreated you. And then when we get into later years and then we start dating and men start treating us badly and men do this and there's so much trust that's broken, I want you to know that you don't necessarily have to put your trust in man, but you can put your trust in God and his design. And if he designs something some some specific way, it's because he loves you and it's what's best for you. So have trust in that. Have trust in the God who loves you, that he will bring you someone. As long as you are living in right standing with God and you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you're waiting for God's peace, he's going to bring you someone worth submitting to and somebody that you can trust. I appreciate appreciate that she acknowledges the hurt and distrust that can be experienced over one's lifetime and the side effects from that. But then you can put your trust in God and God's design. They said earlier that men should never ask you to submit. You do it because it's what God wants. And then so long as you're in right standing with God, he'll bring you someone you can trust. But people are complex. You can think you can trust someone and that can turn out not to be true. And what then? Angela and Ariel would have women thinking that perhaps they're not in right standing with God and that's how they ended up trusting the wrong person. So far, everything I've come across regarding submission, no matter how benign it might sound at first, points the finger at women if they choose wrong and rather than do anything, the answer is always to either keep submitting or submit more and pray. And that's not good enough. Angela and Ariel have a large platform and if they're going to talk about this subject, they need to speak carefully. These two both say they're naturally submissive, so they should know better than most that if they're not careful, that can set them up for a world of hurt and pain. You still need to have a backbone. You still need to think. That's essentially it for this video. They say not to be embarrassed, to be single, to make God your focus, and close with a prayer. Now, we've discussed wives submitting to husbands, and in January, Angela and Ariel appeared on George Janko's channel to discuss how men can get a good woman. I imagine this appearance really helped their channel. George has over 2 million subscribers and this video got nearly a million views. I'm not entirely sure what George is about. It looks like he just does interviews, but Angela and Ariel said a few things that made me go, what? I did listen to this originally back in March and I sent myself a few notes. He's supposed to be interviewing them, but he does most of the talking. They make God sound like something that toys with your life and is also in charge of it. Nothing is your responsibility. It's all on Jesus. Oh my God, I hate the way they talk about women like they're something to be won and molded by a man. It's like they're using religion as a placeholder instead of personality. I feel bad for people who are struggling, but religions prey on people's insecurities for this exact reason. They're lost and adrift, so they cling to something that seems to offer the answer to everything instead of thinking about it themselves. I don't remember what prompted me to make those notes, but let's get into it and refresh my memory. From the opening, it seems that Ariel and Angela are there to tell men what a good woman is, which is interesting. I also died a little inside. And to me, to find a good woman, I, I would want to go to a good woman, mm -hmm. right? And I feel from the, the display that you guys are putting out, I don't know you personally, from what your message is, you guys seem to be very good girls. Ariel is 33 and Angela is 27. Anyway, they go over their upbringing and how they met and George just advertised his merch. Apparel that reads, pray for your friends, church boy, made by God, and in that advertisement, an interview he did flashed by. Why is an apparently religious channel interviewing Andrew Tate? And that was only eight months ago, so it's not as though it was when Andrew was still flying under the radar. Back to the story. Angela says when she came to LA, she started experiencing spiritual warfare, and I've heard this so much by this point, I have to ask. Do they not realize that everyone goes through hard times? Everyone experiences doubt? Everyone wonders why everything is going wrong? It's not Satan. It's just life. Anyway, we eventually get to the point. What good women want in a man and what the structure is to be a good woman. And I have so many thoughts about this video, but we'll be here all day. So I'll stick to the topic. What does a man need to do to get you guys to notice him? Uh, we see videos of men, you know, oh, they need to grind and, you know, don't, you got to be the leader of the house and you got to, you got to, I don't know, the way they talk is just so aggressive. Like, you need to like, you need to kill an alligator with your hands and just be able to rip its blood at any time. Like, it's just so much. And to me, it's just like, as long as I love and provide, I feel like, I feel like, the, the ripping rip of a, I'm just kidding. So, no, 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 let's talk about, let's talk about it. Like, what is in your guys' eyes, right? Like, say, 
I, what I want to do is I want to I want to put it in your guys' court. I'm tired of hearing men what women want. I want to hear what women want from men. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if, if, yeah. if listen, I'm off the market, but if <laughs> I was not on the market, I would not be listening to some dudes that are like. You know what I mean? This like, is what women want. Like, let women tell you what they want. Yeah, I do you want like, yeah. to okay. go to the, the I don't know. It's, uh, I don't go to a cow to ask them how eggs are. You know what I mean? Like, it's just to me, it's a different dairy product. We can speak biblically. We can spear, speak no, 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 spiritually. No, no, no. Just and talk, we can speak practically. Just okay. talk real. Like, Listen, like you guys. Like, is, how you guys are. This is all we want, right? <laughs> We're very simple. Very simple. We want a man who acts like a man, mm -hmm. who's manly, who takes care of things. Leader. I don't need you to kill an alligator with your hands, but I need to feel so feminine around you because you are so masculine that I can turn my brain off because I know you've got it. Yeah. I trust you. I trust your intellect. I trust your character. I trust that I can close my eyes and follow you blindly and I'm going to be happy about where I end up. That's what it's about. We go out. I don't have to use my brain. I don't have to think. You know what I mean? Order the whole thing for us. Take me. Plan the thing. Say where t You tell me where we're going. And we're all set. That's honestly, it's so lost on us. And like, yes, toxic masculinity, that's not good, but we need masculinity. Mm -hmm. It's really important. And that's what we try to push. What kind of man wants a woman who turns her brain off around him? Why would God bother giving women brains if they're not going to use them? Trusting someone is great. Don't trust blindly. Don't turn off your brain. Why is feeling feminine being equated to turning off your brain? Is she aware that it sounds as though she believes thinking isn't feminine? And we live in a time of unfortunate new age feminism and this whole idea that women and men need to be the same and they need to compete and they, and it's all from the enemy. It's all lies. None of it. So is you don't want to be us. equal. It's we're equal in in God's eye. We're equal in value. We're different in in role and in the way that we operate. What on earth is new age feminism? I am so tired of this. Feminism is not men and women are the same. Everyone is different. Though Angela, Ariel, and I are all women, we're all clearly very different people. And that is the point. We're all people. And you know what? If you don't like feminism, stop recording, stop touring the country, stop posting on socials, and go live with your parents until your father finds you a husband. Stop using the benefits of feminism while trashing it. And moreover, don't be a hypocrite. You say women should be under their father's authority until they marry. Go live out your words. And to point that out, because he's always like, like when I'm with him, I feel so safe yeah. and feel so like careless. So like I'm with him like da, 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 da. And he was like, dude, you worry me. Like, are you hello? like, you know, if I'm like being like, oh, I'm clumsy in general, but if I'm being clumsy or sometimes like, I don't know, you know, you're just with him. So you feel safe. So you're not really like thinking much because yeah, yeah, you're just yeah. like, I'm like, I know we're good. And I'm like, don't worry. Like when I'm by myself, I'm very aware of everything that's going on around me. But when I'm with you, I'm not like, okay, this person's there and this person's here and this person's there because I'm with you. But when I'm by myself, I'm like super like, okay, like paranoid. So you turn off your brain around him and when he's not there, you're super paranoid. That sounds healthy. Anyway, these two totally not boss babes talk about how they have to tap into their masculine and be dominant in other areas of their life. So they want to turn it off when they get home, which leads George to ask. When you guys submit though, Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If women don't want to submit, we can't be the leader, yes. right? Because I'm not going to pin you down and be like, submit. Like, you know, like, it has to be willing. She was willingly ready to submit to me. Uh -huh. Like, when we're out in public, this, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this. Uh, if I say, hey, be quiet, turn around, get in the car, we've already discussed that, hey, if I tell you this, this means we're in danger. I need you to shut your mouth, start <laughs> looking around, grab your shit, get in the car, we're leaving. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because mm -hmm. we might have eyes on us that somebody's gonna rob us in LA or something's happening. But if I said, hey, be quiet, get in the car right now, she's like, don't tell me anything, what? Hey, you don't tell me anything, what? I don't know my father. You don't know my father? And I'm like, all right, bitch, get shot then and robbed. I'm gonna be in the car. You know what I mean? Like, you wanna act like this? Go ahead, get it. I can definitely see why Shauna submits to George. He seems great. You know what she does? She goes, okay, and she grabs because the first thing she thinks when she sees me say this is, okay, he provides for me in every single possible yeah. way, mm -hmm. right? He provides financially, spiritually, loving. Uh, okay, I did all this and I earned her respect. Right. Now she submits to me. Mm -hmm. A lot of men don't want to provide these things mm -hmm. and they're just expecting their women to submit for no reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you're ready to split the bill with your chick that you asked Please. on a date, don't ask her to submit to you, bro. You guys are now equal. She's paying for half the bill. I do love Ariel's pained please 
as though splitting the bill on a date is the worst thing someone can do. Anyway, this is probably unintentional, but it sounds as though to George, money is the equalizer. If a woman is paying or helping to pay, she is equal and you can't ask her to submit. However, if she's relying on you to pay, then she isn't equal and you can ask her to submit. This is definitely healthy. Anyway, let's take God out of this. Let's bring God out of it, right? Let's, let's talk to the atheists. Let's talk to the people that are godless. You're a leader regardless. I, when you're, when you're in, a, in a new relationship, the girl's always wanting to please you. Mm -hmm. So she is going to move in the direction that she feels that pleases you. And you have the ability to, to completely make this woman filthy mm -hmm. or bring her up to a different level of life. Mm -hmm. And that's your choice. And sadly, even girls that are like, no, 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 I dictate where, no, you don't. You're a liar. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, then you're most likely going to die alone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because that's not how the world works. It never has been. Mm -hmm. We take God out of it. It just never has, it never been. has been. It's never been like that. When you meet somebody, even the movies, the songs, you change up your vibe. You're like, oh, I want to impress this person. I want to be like this. I want to submit. I want to I want to serve. This. These are natural traits just from biology. Like, oh, I like this person. Okay, well, I know that other people like her, so I have to compete with other people. Mm -hmm. Am I understanding this correctly? Even without God, men dictate the relationship and women have to try and please the man, otherwise they'll end up alone. George is trying to distance himself from the other podcasts earlier, but this is the same thing fresh and fit, whatever, and so on say. Women have to submit, otherwise they'll just be contentious and no man wants to deal with that, so unsubmissive women will die alone. They don't seem to understand that having to pretend to be someone you're not is actually worse than being alone. And not being submissive doesn't mean you fight about everything. It's not even about submission. It's about being a good, kind person and treating people with respect. Everyone wants respect, even women. Most people want to be loved, even men. Women are not children that need to be managed by men. This gender divide is so pointless. And what they're trying to push is so unhealthy and can be so dangerous. And I swear I'm not trying to be obtuse, but it didn't make much sense. It just seemed very vague. It was a lot like listening to Girl Defined, but Girls Gone Bible is already more successful than Girl Defined has ever been, or let's be honest, ever will be. And that is scary. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.